I got a nice chunk of red oak. It's about 20 inch diameter, give or take a few inches. And it's probably four feet long, a little shorter, maybe 45 inches long, maybe 40 inches long. And I know this because it fit between this gate in a second. And uh, it was supposed to get cut up into firewood. I don't have a big saw. I just have a shitty electric saw. And I asked the tree service guys to do it. They, they didn't do it. Um, but I didn't mind because I don't have full-size red oak handle billets. So that's what I'm going to do. This is gonna fit. And I needed to move this thing. Uh, so I'm using the hookaroon or pickaroon, whatever you want to call it. I think it's a hookaroon. Um, and man, is it effective. So much more effective than trying to roll a log with your hands or your feet. And you'll see that in just a second. You could see this angle makes it look like it wouldn't have fit, but in a second the depth perception will get corrected. And there it is, like a glove. Pretty happy with it. Yeah, look how happy I was. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> so this is the final resting place. And this is how you know how ineffective your feet are to move a log this big. Look at how, look at the struggle. I'm kicking it, it's it's going a little bit, it's rocking. It's going a little bit. Now watch this, one-handed, with a 32 or 36 inch handle hookaroon. Easy. I am not at all struggling. And that's why I love this tool. Very effective, very versatile. Don't sleep on it, get one if, if you uh, deal with big timber. Right now I'm looking at the pith and I'm seeing how it's a little off center. So I'm deciding how I want to split this down the middle and where the middle is going to be. Or if it's going to be a little uh, towards one side. I decided to try to go down the middle kind of straight up and down from here. You can try to find uses for the fro that aren't uh, very normal. I guess what I'm doing right here is a little bit like that. I like to score the line uh, with the fro, but I don't use it for the splitting when the timber is this big. It just is a little ineffective and it's hard on this pretty soft fro uh, that has some cracking. So I'm just keeping it safe and all I do is score with heavy with a big amount of mass and when I get it down to like maybe you know it depends on the the size but let's say a six by six that's when I would definitely start using the fro for that to control the split and try to get be the best yield I can you don't have to score a line or if you do score a line it doesn't need to be very deep but I like to Give it a little extra uh, depth and a little wider of a kind of a curve um, than just one score, just one time over. Uh, so I was using this Taiwanese hatchet and uh, the edge on it is so wonky and I could have ground it for a long time and fixed it and made it even, but it was, it's, it's actually a little too bad. It's, it almost can't be fixed. One side is so much thicker than the other. Um, but I had to change over because it wasn't going in to my liking. So I picked up the uh, Council Tool Sport Utility. Uh, I guess it's a Dayton pattern. Just a little boy's axe that I've abused. Um, I don't abuse new tools, but I do. What does that say about me? That I mean, I don't abuse old tools. I abuse the new tools. What does that say about me? That I hurt the new ones <laughs> not the old ones I don't know anyway at some point you know that's that's how we get these vintage axes all beat up at one point these tools were new and someone beat the shit out of it because it's like yeah I can go buy another one I don't know it's not that they're still being made when something's still being made you tend you, you uh, the customer base tends to abuse it a little more but once you know, once parts go out of business, once nothing's made anymore for it, 
I guess that's not how axes work, though. It's not like a car where you replace parts. You can always make, you know, the handle isn't that difficult to replace, to be honest. Yeah, you see how I kind of um, went to the left a little bit on that score line. So I kind of tried to get close to the pith. I didn't want to waste too much material. It ended up biting me in the end because there was, I, I think that's where there was a big crack emanating from the pith. But uh, let me speed this up. Come on. Let's speed this up, buddy. I do kind of take my time at first. I, I don't really rush through it at the beginning but once you start breaking it down more than half like if you're in quarters things start getting faster and faster as the timber gets lighter uh so that's at least for this larger diameter wood like this when you're uh arriving an eight inch diameter log things get a lot easier but your yield is just so much less the yield with 20 plus inch diameter I mean I bet I haven't done 30 but I bet it's immense I bet the it really ticks up the workload um, the hewing I mean the, the I think personally the hewing is more difficult on the body but it's not just it's just your arm or, or whatever is the weakest link in your arm will get tired uh, muscle wise and you know anyway hope you guys uh enjoy this this is one of my favorite parts of this whole thing is riving love it controlling the split or trying to control the split it's fun using a shorter handle plumb uh, sledge on this one and I have to replace the handle I want to but it, it's it's got an annoying step wedge in it so I'm just using it and I'm trying to be careful I'm trying to be mindful of if the head slips off but I'm also checking it every once in a while it's a little scary I'm a little dumb doing this but it didn't it didn't backfire this time <laughs> Once again, I think I was going for the wedge a little early on this. It happens, you know. Different woods are di uh, work in different ways. And also, my wedge isn't very keen. If it was more keen, it would slip right in. And it wouldn't be an issue. I'm wasting my time. <laughs> Watch me waste my time here. <laughs> what an idiot. Pajama wear an idiot. <laughs> the best pajama boy with sandals. Damn, I got a real look, don't I? <laughs> This is actually against my policy. I I don't think I've ever um, handled big bigger timber like this with wearing sandals. Pretty pretty um smart idea. I'm actually an advocate of wearing poor footwear for what you're doing. Like just that sledgehammer coming off the handle <laughs> that fell on my foot. That would really suck. <laughs> yeah, that, that so. I've talked about this a little bit with people. Um, I'm not really worried about an axe hurting my foot. I'm kind of more worried about the timber or, you know, other other factors. Like a splinter would suck. Getting a splinter uh, below your nail, your toenail or whatever, like in it. Oh man, that would suck. Never. That's why I try not to like m have fast movements with my feet around. Uh, rough timber like this. Well, I guess sometimes I fast boob it's with my feet. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, that was, uh, I love playing this game. Don't you guys kind of like him having a little bit of danger in your lives? I mean, I control a lot of things to not be in danger other than this. <laughs> so, I guess I'd have to live with the consequences if it ever comes back to bite me, but if, uh, hurting my toenail one time is all that's happened to me so far, I'm pretty confident that um, I'll keep myself relatively safe. You know, just like minor injuries will happen. <laughs> nothing nothing crazy, let's, let's uh, hope. But I do recognize that it's possible when you don't have the best protection you possibly can. Um, but yeah, I'm not scuba diving, you know, I'm not going 300 feet into the ocean here. It's, uh, it's more simple. I'm pussyfooting right here. You could make this happen faster. You see in the front right there? I could put that... Yeah. I figured it out. I could have uh, wedged that a little better. Seems to be a little, little uh, bit of fiber still together there. It, it looks like it didn't split straight, but this was kind of a funky piece, so... You'll see it. It, it was pretty good. It doesn't really taper. It just kind of curves... The grain has some curve to it. I was I was thinking, oh shit, I fucked up. But on the other side, it's it, it was apparent that uh, it ran out on the big side to the uh, bottom, I believe. We'll see in a second, won't we? I love the PV. What a useful tool for uh, timber. Now, this one doesn't have a big throat. I, think, I believe that's what it's called. But um, it's still really useful for this part where I try to separate uh, two halves. It's also just kind of cool to use. The handle's very weathered and patinaed. It kind of reminds me of like I'm using an old like marine tool. Like this was in the, <laughs> this was in the salt water or something. Just a harsh environment, but also seemed to be pretty well maintained. Has a few kind of chunks missing out of it, but not very big. The handle that is. It would be cool to replace that handle, wouldn't it? That would be a cool project, but I don't really want to. I like I like that handle. And it still works. I try to take care of it. I beat up the metal end, but I try to take care of the wood. This wood isn't exactly perfect, so I didn't try to split it into thirds or different kind of shapes. Well, I did actually try, or I was planning to, but then I kind of talked myself out of it. I saw some funk to the wood, and look how curvy it is. Didn't split straight, so I went half. Uh, so making it into quarters. And this is the 
kind of dwarf end. This is the this is the part that I thought wasn't as quality, and it did turn out to have a little bit of uh, bad stuff going on, some knots and funk. So it's about uh, 41 inches, and there's a there's a there was a face cut and a notch put in. So there's a little bit missing on part of uh, that end, the far end that I'm at right now. But um, not every piece is like that. So about 41 inches, cup, you know, give or take an inch. And um, I had to cut uh, this this right here. I had to cut both pieces, I believe. Might have been just one quarter that I had to cut after I did it in half again. So an eighth. I had to cut two eighths, I think, into thirties. I might be wrong, but we'll see later in this video. Um, I'm just watching it with you. I don't remember. <laughs> This is why I use a beater axe or something not very, not very valuable, because I'm going to be swinging it near wedges, and I, I, sh I don't, I can't care about that sort of thing. I want to do this uh, efficiently with, you know, less energy. I don't want to waste energy, because um, doing this kind of work can be tough if you're not in shape. Uh, but I think a lot of people that do this type of stuff are in shape i'm just not <laughs> there's not a huge cardio component to this so maybe not that kind of shape but there's definitely certain muscle groups you need to be strong and parts of your body that uh you need to have uh stamina in like you know how i talked about the the hewing earlier with my arm um you will get tired you have to take breaks even the best rock climbers, I kind of learned something from them about uh, how they shake their arms out. Even the best rock climbers, they need to take breaks. They can't just go the whole time up to the top of a you know cliff or whatever or the rock wall. They they stop, they assess, uh, they shake their arms out. They kind of try to relieve uh, some of the. I guess it would start fatiguing so bad it could cramp what, what would happen the worst i don't know anyway that did happen to me today i almost started cramping in my arm so i had to take a break and uh i guess that's a big part of what i'm talking about when i say in shape for this type of thing if you can't and also you know if you can't swing a sledgehammer for 10 minutes you're gonna be fucked it's it's to me swinging a sledgehammer isn't that hard but to someone that doesn't do this maybe these muscles aren't kind of prepared or used to this type of thing i could see that being tiring for a lot of people um i was getting a little uh sometimes you have to be you have to come down from awkward angles you could see me in this video trying to kind of figure it out where am i going to stand while i swing this um, that can make you tired if you feel like it's an awkward uncomfortable way to swing see look look at me look at me i don't know what the fuck i'm doing that's just how it is sometimes you got a problem solved that's that's a fun part of this though don't just stand in one place and do the same thing over and over again try new stuff use different tools you know there are ways to to make this faster make this easier on us you see how i went to the pv a little earlier this time i think i enjoy being a little unconscious sometimes but there is uh there is a benefit to being more thoughtful while you um rive and process uh timber into your own lumber you can get a larger yield obviously you can keep safer you know if you're not if you don't if you don't already build good habits and uh, uh you could you could hurt yourself if you're not paying attention but i try to build pretty good habits except for uh protection <laughs> it's hard not to mention i mean come on guys elephant in the room here elephant in the room this fat guy's wearing sandals <laughs> all 
I'd say this part is pretty mandatory to get rid of the early wood. Uh, it's knotty, you know, the, it's near the pith anyway, so could be a little rotten. Um, with oaks, I've always done it. I, I don't, I'm trying to think what other woods have I arrived in where I had to worry about the, the very center of the hardwood. I don't really know, but it's, it's, it's when the tree was immature and at least the, the closer to the pith. The closer to the very center of where the pith is basically where the tree started then all the growth rings around it or what grew literally around it uh, the way that a tree grows everything wherever something grows in a tree that's where it stays and then the tree grows around more it, it, it expands everywhere around that's what the that's why the growth rings are in a circle and sometimes it doesn't grow evenly like one side of the growth ring can have a lot less uh have a lot tighter growth rings than the other that can be due to many factors maybe it's um tension and compression type thing i know that with uh softwood and hardwoods the way that the branches um grow are different like the support needs to be on top for conifer and on the bottom for hardwoods on a heavy branch but i might have that reversed that's just how it is with i'm not too good with tension and compression i'm a little stupid i don't know if you guys have that where your brain stops computing and you just it just ends it's like no i can't keep doing the math equation i guess my brain just this is the world's end of my brain <laughs> this is my i have a flat earth brain and there's an end of it it's not a circle and it's the storage lockers are full up, filled up and i just can't compute my computers uh, has a system error whenever i <laughs> whenever i try to do deductions i'm just a dumb man i don't know it sucks that i'm not dumb enough though to like be able to have excuses don't you hate that when you're dumb but not dumb enough god damn it can't even say yeah but i'm really dumb it's like well you're dumb in that but you, you're not dumb in this god damn it <laughs> anyway uh i am dumb <laughs> you know i you know the groot from that movie uh guardians of the galaxy my uh, i'm i'm dumb i am dumb you know the guy says i am groot it's fucking vin diesel isn't that weird as fuck one movie Vin Diesel did, or a couple movies, I guess, is just him going, I'm Groot. Hi, I'm Groot. <laughs> it's all fucking... Imagine uh, people thinking that you're perfect for that part. <laughs> just have him say the dumbest thing. <laughs> just have him act like a Pokemon. Everybody else can talk regular, except for you, because you're a fucking idiot, Vin. So we're going to give you the dumbest character. Oh, Vinny. Yeah, you see how it's kind of tough right here? I'm, pro I'm problem solving. I'm figuring this out. I also wanted to kind of get the right angle so you could see what I'm doing, but I couldn't. So I just had to I just had to give up and go on the other side like this. Oh, shit. You see that knot right there? It's just nasty wood. You, you could use it for kind of outside purposes maybe you could get a steak out of it or something but i wouldn't i don't bother with it. i eat i just eliminated some letters in the alphabet right there i don't bother with it though um i just use it as firewood i think i might have skipped a step here but you kind of get the you get that part of it don't you so now i'm going to move to the fro um this is a about a six inch wide piece and looks about you know pretty similar with the with the thickness I didn't document um, cutting this shorter getting rid of some of the knots I can't believe I didn't film that but anyway I, I know I said earlier in the video that the other side was the problem side, but I guess I was wrong. I think this was the th side I thought was going to be a little better. Um, 
and yeah, I had to cut a lot off. Maybe like baby. 11 inches. Oh, baby. Yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? Tapers a little on the bottom, but there's that's still a lot of thickness. You don't have to worry about that. A little thinner. It kind of also is a little, a little funky, too. It's not straight. I think I could still use it for a nice billet, though. Maybe even two. I think I broke that in half, but I'm not sure. Let's get rid of that. That was a false alarm, this one. I decided against it. That score mark is from when I was going to do the quarter into thirds. Rub the quarter into thirds and decided against it. I think. Yeah, so now I'm just getting rid of the what's closer to the middle. Uh, and the, also trying to get rid of the cracking, which doesn't work. It's very deep cracking, so I end up splitting this in half. The other part of uh, riving is the drying process. Well, the other part of processing is the drying process. Damn, I hate when I say the same word twice. Anyway, <laughs> um, and at, before you dry, you have to, well, you don't have to hew. I started hewing a lot more hew now, though. Out. It just helps drying time, and it helps it. with cracking if you get rid of kind of squaggly, squiggly stuff in the sapwood. If you're not using the sapwood, get rid of it because it's more wet, and I believe it can, uh, it dries out faster. You know, all that, it loses all that water, and then it uh, cracks faster than the hardwood. So, yeah, I get rid of that stuff, and then uh, I hew, and then I glue. And then, the most important part is the storage, and how I figure that out. Because, uh, yeah, you can do all this work, and then you can That's ruin healing. it by having too much airflow or it drying too Not quickly bad. at first. Maybe I should, uh, maybe let's do this. This is wide as hell. So I showed you all the steps. Let's just split this in half for the last one. You always want to be horizontal. The fro is parallel with your body. So it's running out to this side. So I'm going to put the thicker side towards me and hopefully hold this side. This is where the fro really thrives. This smaller timber like this works so well. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. This one's the good one. Sometimes you just can't control things when it comes to uh, your own lumber and uh, this crack was deep inside the heartwood and it's deep I've probably taken off at least probably an inch or ha at least half an inch upwards of an inch and it's still deep thinking I might just have to split this yeah so I got two pieces right here this one hopefully is good uh, hopefully it's uh, wide enough and hopefully it doesn't crack. It's definitely thick enough, thick as hell. I could almost have this. Um, this piece, I'm not sure. It's the grain is going horizontal mostly. Maybe it'd be a sledgehammer, uh, sledge billet, or a maul without an axe eye. But yeah, it kind of tapers down at the end. A little goofy. Good enough though. And man, is uh, red oak really fun and pleasant to uh, carve? Pretty soft in this state, in this green state.